Hello everyone, my name is Courtney Pollock and I am the Customer Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Mastering Year in Closing in Acumatica, presented by Esteban Peralta. Before we get started, let's go over some housekeeping items. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise to a minimum. However, throughout the webinar, you can submit any questions you have. If you'd like to submit a question, look for the questions section in your GoToWebinar and we'll answer all your questions at the end of the presentation. We're also recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as those who registered but were not able to attend. And finally, we'd appreciate your participation in our closing survey. With that said, we are thrilled that you've taken some time out of your busy day to be with us on this webinar. SWK is here to help you fulfill your vision of a smarter and easier way to run your business by providing you with tools, support, software, and industry knowledge whenever you need it. So we know you're all here to learn today and we want you to not hesitate to ask any questions you have while we have a solution expert here. And as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. Check us out and give us a follow on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube so you don't miss out. Okay? That's enough for me. Let's hand it over to Esteban for the main event. Thanks, Courtney. So just a little bit about me. I'm Esteban and I am an Acumatica consultant. I've been doing it for over five years, mostly with financials and distribution and a little bit of e-commerce and manufacturing. And just for fun, I like to do uh, cooking and cars on the side. Now to the main event here with our agenda and the end of year webinar that we're going to be doing. So we're going to cover these different sub ledgers and how to close them and go through some of those closing processes. Um, but just on a high level, we're going to look at closing uh, 2022 just because I have my demo data and most of that data is in that year. So having said that, let's right, uh, let's jump right into it. And I'm going to be switching back and forth between the slides and Acumatica, of course. So let's go ahead and pull up Acumatica and let's start with AP. All right. So I have my demo site here loaded and running. And if you see some if you see that it's a little bit slow, it's because I have this running on my local computer. Um, otherwise, typically, you know, if you're SaaS hosted or on-prem, Acumatica would be uh, a lot faster. And also, I just want to make sure that I hide my camera so we can fully focus on the presentation. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what we have for AP. And notice these are the steps that we're gonna look into. And of course, there might be some steps that are particular to your business that you might also need to do. But these are some of the general steps that I have listed out. So let's first start with this one here, looking at any unreleased transactions. And those are important, of course, because Acumatica won't let you close the subledger if you have any transactions out there that are in a, either in a on hold or balance status. So let's look at the closed financial period screen to help us see what we have. And since we're doing AP right now, I'm going to go open up my payables module. And I'm looking for closed financial periods. And I can scroll down and find it here. And notice a few things here. Because we're dealing with the last period of the year, you know, December, we can see it listed here. But we also have this adjustment period here that has been set up with my demo data. We're just gonna ignore that one. We're, we, we just wanna deal with the last month of the year, which is December. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and select it. And let's see what unreleased documents we have out there. So if we click on that, and of course, 
because Acumatica is access rights driven, uh, you would need to make sure that uh, you have those appropriate access rights. So in this case, as you can see, we have a document out there that is unreleased. So let's just take a look at that and see. And I can click on these hyperlinks here, the ones that are blue. Let me zoom in a little bit. And clicking on that will bring up a new screen where we can see the detail of the bill. And as you can see, we have this bill in an on hold status. And I created this bill as a test bill just to show you guys out there what um, how it would look like with an un unreleased transaction. Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. I have the access rights to do so, and I haven't released this, so I can simply just go ahead and remove it. Yeah, and we'll um, we'll pretend that it was just a duplicate bill out there, and we don't need to process it. Okay. So now going back to my closed financial periods, just so we can double check, if I click on this button again, so this makes sense, we have no other unreleased documents out there, which is good. All right, let's go back to our PowerPoint and see what are the next steps. So if you're dealing with multi-currency vendors, you would have to, and if you need to revalue the your AP accounts that would be something for you to do next and you can use this revalue AP account screen I won't go through the individual uh, clicks in Acumatica it's pretty straightforward okay so the next step here would be to reconcile our AP accounts with the GL and ideally the, ba the balances should match Okay, so for that, we're going to use two reports to help us out. We're going to use the AP balance by GL account on the AP side, and then the trial balance, of course, on the GL side. So let's take a look at those. So let's see, I can search for it through my workspace, or I can simply type it out. And it will get me there, as you can see on their payables. Now, you're going to be frequently accessing these menu items. So I recommend you add these to your favorites. And you can click on this star to do so. And you will easily have it available on your favorites workspace. So let's go ahead and click into it. All right. And in this case, I want to look at accounts. And this would be for December, of course. Let's run it. OK, so we have a $24,000 balance for our uh, $20,000 or 20,000 account, AP account. Now let's compare that to the GL, see if it matches. So I'm going to multitask here with Acumatica, really easy to multitask. Of course, we're using a browser, so we can easily open up another browser to do that. So we're going to go into the report that we want to pull up, finance, trial balance detailed, right click, or to tap if you're using a laptop like I am, two finger tap, open a new tab. Okay. And here's our trial balance. Uh, let me switch this to December. Let's go ahead and run this. This looks good. Yep. All right. So our AP account is looking good, $24,000. So we're all balanced there. Okay, going on to our next step. 
And here I have the final step as actually closing that period. And of course, like I said, if there's any other processes that you, that you have, so you might have your own checklists out there, make sure to do those as well before doing this final step. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna go back into my payables. Oops, right here. And let's bring up the closed financial periods. And I'm actually, since I'm going to often call up this report, I'm gonna open it up in a new tab. I can rearrange these just as easily. Okay, so let's go ahead and close December real good here. Hit process. Oh, and like I said, though, since we do have this adjustment period, just because it came pre-installed with my data set, uh, we're not going to worry about an adjustment period. So we're just going to go ahead and process it as well. Okay, green on the screen. We're good to go. If you had any errors or anything else you needed to look into, you would see a list of them right here. Investigate that further. In this case, we're good. And moving on. Oh, there it is. All right, AR is next, of course. So a few more things that you would potentially do with AR. So let's start with this one here. If there's any overdue charges that you set up in Acumatica, be sure to run those. And you can use your calculate overdue charges screen to do so. I've also included these links that will take you to further documentation to number one, set up those overdue charges and then to actually run them. So if, um, if you find that helpful, be sure to look at that documentation. The next one would do would be to auto apply any payments. So this would be helpful if you, for example, if you have any open balances, any credits, you can apply those to open documents, such as these overdue charges, if uh, you needed to. And you can of course use this auto apply payment screen to achieve that, okay? The next step here would be to prepare and release any dunning letters, if that's part of your process. And there's a few steps there, and I also have supporting documentation there to help you out with that, okay? And I'm not going into all of these steps, otherwise, um, you know, we'd be here for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> so next would be here to, just like on the AP side, right? Let's look at any unreleased transactions. So in this case, we're gonna switch over receivables, show all. And I'm looking for close financial periods. There it is. Cool. So let's select December and see if we have anything out there. All right, so Acumatica couldn't find anything. So we're good with that. Let's hit okay. Cool. So going back to here and on to our next slide. The next step would be, of course, to revalue AR accounts. If you have any uh, multi-currency set up, so be sure to do that. And now going on to this step, we also have to make sure that the AR um, reconciles with the GL. So similarly like AP, we can use these similarly named reports to do that. So let's look at the AR balance by GL account first. I'm just gonna search for it because I don't know. Oh, it's under reports. So you can also navigate to it by pointing and clicking into that area, but here it is. And I'm actually gonna actually want to open it in a new tab. Mm. 
Okay. So as you can see, really easy to multitask. And let's make sure our parameters are right. Notice these are the default parameters. If there was any other filtering option you required, we can easily add that in Acumatica with our report designer tool. Or you can even look at additional filters here that you can also set up. But we want to look at our account info and for December month here. Let's go ahead and run it. All right. So we have a $10,244 balance. And let's go ahead and pull up our trial balance. And there it is. So those are balancing out. So far, so good. All right. Going back to our slides. So we just did this step. Next one would be to prepare and process customer statements. Uh, there's a few steps that you would have to do there to first prepare them and to then run them, either print them out or email them, emailing them. Really easy to set up email and send and receive emails from Acumatica. I have supporting documentation on that. Next, make sure to run commissions. Acumatica does have a process for that, but more often than not, I've seen customers set up their own increase or reports that then they use to create or process their commissions. Um, so that would be up to, to your process. And then lastly here, we can look into closing our financial period for this sub-ledger after we've completed all our tasks. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to open up receivables. Same thing. Actually, I have it over here. Right. So in this case, I can go ahead and close off both. Cool. All right. So now we have receivables closed off. Next would be banking slash cash. So for this one, same thing, we would go into close financial periods for cash or as it's banking, called banking here. And let's go ahead and open up close financial periods. Now, I don't think I had anything out there for unreleased documents. And yep, this confirms it. Okay. But um, the main task for banking cash, of course, is going to be your bank recs. And depending on the process that you might have set up in Acumatica, whether you're using bank feeds or uploading documents, that process might be a lot smoother than doing a typical bank rec outside of Acumatica, right? With Acumatica, we have that auto match feature that basically matches what you have on your statement to what is an Acumatica, saves you a lot of time. And if you're not familiar with that process, I do have supporting documentation on that as well. Uh, but yeah, make sure you reconcile your cash accounts, the ones that you've defined as uh, ones that need reconciliation. Okay. And then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and also close out banking cash. And here we're going to go ahead and run this as well. So for December and the adjustment, close that off. Green on the screen. Awesome. All right. So the next sub-ledger would be inventory. And same thing, we would look to see if there's any unreleased transactions out there. 
uh, but with this particular subledger, and I'm going to pull it up, pull up the closed financial uh, period screen so I can show you. You do have an additional report to help you see what else you might need to release. So let's see, under inventory, close financials. And so notice you have what you've been seeing this a few times as the your unreleased documents report. But also you have documents not posted to inventory. So with the distribution module, you might be doing either fulfillment or receiving. Acumatica will generate inventory transactions in the back end. Uh, but sometimes if you have, um, if you don't have that setting to update the GL, you might have things out there that still need to get posted. So be sure to also look into this as well. And if I go ahead and open it up, I don't have anything out there. So I'm good there. Okay. And if we go back to our next step here, uh, the next one would be to validate your inventory with what you have down at the GL. And for this one, we can use this historical inventory valuation report to do that. So let's print, let's call it up and I can do it here. Historical inventory valuation. As you can see. Okay, so there it is. Let's see. Looking at December. Okay, and let's go ahead and run this as well. Okay, so here's some useful information. I am looking for the ending balances. So let me go to the last page using this button here. And as I can see, we have a 33,299 balance. Okay, so let's compare that against our GL. Close this workspace. All right. And we have here um, a few inventory accounts. And I can do math in my head, but um, I also like using Excel. So let's, let's export to Excel. Let me show you how easy that is. So there you go. I can open up my file here. Yeah, it looks like the right file. And zoom in a little bit for you. But looking at our inventory rows here, if we do a quick sum here, there we go. Okay, so we're good with inventory as well. But a, a few things to know if you don't see those numbers balancing out, it could be and similar to the other subledgers, but it could be because you might have done journal entries at the GLN that weren't done on the other subledger. So that could be one reason. Another one is if you've made any changes to your configurations or settings, I think I've also seen this with importing a ton of data, you might have to run this process in inventory, it's called validate inventory. And Acumatica will, will go ahead and do that for you if you notice any balances that are off. Okay, so be, be sure to use that. All right. And here, of course, the last step would be to close. So let's go ahead and close that financial period. And going back here, I think I have it 
opened up here yep let's go ahead and select both and process this cool awesome all right so that's inventory of course you might have a few other processes that you might have i've seen some they do um, cycle counts before they close the period so I'm sure you'll have your own task list. Okay, fixed assets. So if you have fixed assets out there, my demo data didn't come with any fixed assets. So I'll just kind of go through these points here. Uh, but make sure you have converted transactions to fixed assets. And you can use this particular report. Uh, use unreconciled transactions for period to see if there's anything out there. Um, also make sure your purchases have been converted to assets. And you can use this processing screen, convert purchases to assets to help you with that. Um, also make sure, of course, you have that you don't have any unreleased documents out there. Okay, so be sure to check with uh, release of fair transactions inquiry. Of course, depreciation is a key task with fixed assets, so make sure you run that accordingly. Um, otherwise, you might have to post manual geo entries for that. Okay. And make sure you reconcile your fixed assets and accumulated depreciation accounts with the GL. And you can use these two reports to help you do that. Okay, so after completing all the steps, you can once again close the financial period as well. So in this case, I can go into my fixed assets workspace. And if you're not seeing it, it could be under more items. And let's see. So here it is. You might want to add it to your main workspace and you can do that by pinning the workspace. And as I can see now, I have it. Of course, you would need access rights to do so as well if you don't have them. So that would be something to double check. Okay, close financial periods. Let's go ahead and do both. and process okay so far so good and going on to our next sub ledger is finally the gl right this is where everything ends up everything all the processes that we're doing we've been doing throughout acumatica this is where everything gets gets posted too so we have a few extra screens here to make sure we have everything good to go the first one let's look at the release transaction screen so this screen here under finance release transactions this would help us see anything that we have out there that hasn't been released into the uh, GL. Typically, though, if you have your system configured correctly, you have Acumatica release those transactions automatically, right? But once in a while, you might see errors, things might come up and you might see a list here hopefully not too long that you'll have to troubleshoot and look into okay another helpful screen to see if there's anything else out there that needs to get posted is this posted uh, or rather post transactions screen so this post transaction screen i don't see it used too often because not too many customers have the option to release but not post to the GL. 
Um, the only times I've really seen this is when customers go live and maybe for the first week or so, they just want to double check the journal entries before they are actually posted to the GL. Okay. But most customers, they have your release and post done at the same time. Um, but this would be a screen to just double check, make sure anything um, out there needs to be posted is, is done so. Okay. Next one here is if we have any multi-currency GL accounts that we need to revalue for currency changes. Of course, we could go ahead and revalue GL accounts doing uh, using this screen. Okay. The next one here, and I've used this inquiry often when I need to troubleshoot GL accounts, if there's any imbalances and things like that, I would recommend you to highly, or to use this or add this screen to your favorites. And if we take a look at it real quick, it's called account details. And I have it under banking too, but I'm looking for the one under finance. Account details, it's under inquiries. Of course, everything in Acumatica is neatly categorized, make your life easier, find things. Okay. So in this case, we, let's see, I, I might not have too much data here. So what I can actually do is... Let me pull up my uh, my live demo site. That might have a little more data here we can look at. And let's see. So as you can see, the reason why I really like this inquiry is because it's going to give me a ton of filtering options. And you will see down here, it's going to give me a lot of transaction detail, including the batch number, the, you know, the journal entry, and then any documents that it's tied to. So for a journal entry for AR, you would see the AR entry, and then you would also see the AR invoice that's associated. So in this case, um, like I said, I, I have a lot of data for 2022. Let's see, maybe September, just so we can have something here to look at. Oh, and I can notice the red asterisk. That means that the field is required, so it needs a value. And what's a common account here? Maybe let's look at our, um, at this one here. So top of the list, okay. And then notice some of your filters here, dates, you have um, beginning, ending balances for whatever date ranges, periods and date ranges. Of course, if you're using sub accounts, you could filter for that as well. And we can, we can even include anything that's not posted. So another way to look at anything that's balanced out there. And as you can see here, we have a few transactions here. We have the module listed out. So anything from ranging from GL to AR. And then of course you have all the documents as well. So as you can see, you can easily look at this report or inquiry, click into these links and really easily navigate around Acumatica, trying to find and and troubleshoot what you need to. Okay. So definitely add that to your favorites. Do that too. Okay. Going back to our presentation slide. Let's see, so where were we? Our account details screen. And then the last step, of course, would be to go ahead and close the GL. And this process is a little bit different. Let me show you why on this master financial calendar screen. 
So if we pull up the right tenant this time, which is not live, we're actually done with live. Let's go ahead and use this one test. And we're going to go into finance and master financial calendar. Let's go ahead and go back into the right one. Okay, cool. So notice here we have a bunch of helpful data. Think of it like a control panel. And notice you have all your sub ledgers that we've been working through and you can see all of them. Uh, from this screen, you can see what is open or not based on the flags. Right, so this makes sense. We've been going through uh, December year end and we have all of them closed. But do notice that we have the status still set to open. And of course, that's because for the GL subledger or for the GL, we haven't actually closed the period. So to close the period for this, we would actually go into our ellipsis here or three dots and we would go ahead and close the periods we would run this but before i do that a few things to note in this screen a few things that you can do as you can see you can open periods as well so after you're done with this period you might want to open up uh, new periods for your next year. So we would also do that through this screen. Like I said, we'll close periods momentarily. You can also lock periods. And lock periods is different from closing periods because lock is, think of it like just as a temporary thing. Um, the use case would be for that would be, let's say, you know, for whatever reason you wanted to lock December but you didn't want any any processes, any other logic that Acumatica does, especially with uh, net income and retained earnings. You don't want those processes to be done. So you would instead just lock the period. It will just prevent users from posting to those periods. That's it. It's not going to do any closing um, automations. It's not going to do anything that might be tied to other processes okay so think of it like this is a soft close almost and this of course would be your um, this would be your hard close deactivating periods this could be helpful if you've opened up too many periods uh, so you can easily deactivate it if you have the of course if you have the access rights to do so okay you can also reopen periods as well uh, but do notice that to reopen a period you will need to have the financial supervi supervisor role in Acumatica and another side note to that is if you have that financial supervisor role you can also post to close periods so be careful that role has a lot of power um, with power comes great responsibility, as, <laughs> as um, Spider-Man's uncle once said. But um, so my recommendation is, because it's such a powerful role, just create a separate user, name it, financial supervisor, and anytime you actually need to use it or reopen periods, just log in as that separate user, and, and that way you don't post to close periods. We have seen cases and tickets come out. So be sure to uh, handle that. OK. And unlock periods, that's uh, self-explanatory, I hope. It's just unlocking a cl uh, locked period. OK. So as you can see, this has a lot of, uh, a lot of features that we can do with this screen. And so, yeah, at this point, we can go ahead and close the GL period. And I'm going to click on close periods. What, one th other side note, and this is throughout Acumatica, 
if you are constantly using these actions, just to save you a click, you can also add this as a favorite. And now you'll see it always on your main screen. That way you don't have to go into this, these extra actions. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and run close periods. And Acumatic is going to bring up this next screen. And we basically just want to go ahead and close out the year. So there it is. Our action is set to close. And we can process. And there you go. So now we've closed the entire year. We're good to go. And a few other things or a few other tips that I'd like to highlight. So a few things to note. When the last financial period is closed, that will essentially close out the year for you automatically. And of course, when that is done, and these, these are just some accounting standards, right? Your net income balance is transferred to retained earnings. And of course, your net income resets to zero for your next year. All that is done automatically as soon as you close the last period of the year. Okay. So uh, let's see. So balances, right? So this is a repetition of this one. Apologize, but I, uh, I, sorry about that, but, uh, yep. So we have our balances transferring to next year and our income statement accounts resetting to zero for next year. Of course, those are temporary accounts. So that makes sense. Um, the next thing we can do is we can open up the new periods when we're ready to do that. And like I said, you can use that master financial calendar screen to go ahead and open up uh, either if it's just that next month or however many months you need to open up. This one's really important here. And this will, I've often seen tickets on this, is um, make sure you have your, make sure you have access to all the companies and branches. Otherwise, you won't see some of that data. So if you see, you might see imbalances and it might not be something that you did wrong. It's just, you don't have the, all the access rights and you're not seeing all your data. So make sure you have that. And then lastly is you can only close periods consecutively. So let's say if you wanted to close, or, or let's say, for example, uh, through June of any given year, all those periods were closed, and then you wanted to close October, so you can't jump around. You would have to close anything before October to do that. And Acumatic is also going to error out, so another check there. All right. So that concludes my presentation. Hopefully you found it helpful and we will be providing supporting documentation because some of these processes, there's a few extra steps that you can do. And um, so that will help you out as well. All right, thank you. And I'll turn it over to Courtney for Q and A. Thank you very much, Esteban, for walking us through, you know, all those different areas of closing in Acumatica. So, um, like he said, we are going to now open it up for Q&A. So, a couple of you have sent some questions through throughout, so thank you. Um, if you have a question, you can put it in the chat box or the question section of your GoToWebinar. 
and I'll have Esteban answer them now. Um, and also just another quick note before we dive into Q&A, like Esteban said, we will be providing additional resources um, in the handout section of your GoToWebinar. You can download the presentation deck today with those steps outlined for each of the modules. Um, and SWK will also be posting, you know, a year end blogs, sending them out in our monthly newsletter. So keep an eye out for those um, other areas where you can see the overview of year and close in Acumatica. So we'll have this webinar recording, we'll have articles on our blogs, and we'll be sharing these in our newsletter. So stay tuned throughout the end of the year. Okay, Esteban, first question I have for you. Can a financial supervisor role post to closed periods? Yeah, so that one is is important. With financial supervisor, you can close to clo uh, post to close periods, and that can be good and bad. And that's why we recommend for you to create a separate user, call it financial supervisor, and that way, if you ever need to post to a close period, especially if you, don't have, if you don't have an adjustment period, you can just log in as that financial supervisor user. Great, thank you. Um, I've got a question about the lock versus closing a period. So you talked um, about the differences between locking and closing a period. Um, and you know, in this question, they're saying if they understood correctly that locking a period was like a soft close and closing the period was actually closing it fully. Um, this particular user is running 2022 R2 um, and they have to close the period before they can lock the period. Um, and they also said that closing the period does not lock down the subledgers, only locking the period closes the subletter. Um, and that they're they're having to close before they can lock. So they're trying to, you know, did they misunderstand? Is there some nuance to this? Can you kind of go more in depth on this lock versus closing and why they might be running into this issue? Hmm. The first thing um, I'm thinking is whether they might have the financial supervisor role. That would be the first thing to check. Um, right, because once we close the period for the sub ledger you're going to see a big not, you're going to see a red error on the transaction that's going to prevent you from doing so um, so i would just double check the access right and as well to add to this they also you know said based on their own experience the only way to shut down the sub ledger is to lock the period um, and they asked if it's possible to lock the subledger when you close the period to avoid accidental accidental changes to it. I mean, you can always lock the period, but it's the typical the standard is to close it. Um, so I would, yeah, to me that sounds like it might be something we might um, if they can reach out. Uh, you know, through a ticket, if they're one of our clients, or we can uh, we can also look into that for them. That might be something further look into in a detailed fashion. Okay, yeah. So if that was your question, we have your information. Um, we'll have one of our team members reach out to you know kind of help clarify that and see what's going on there. Um, and then in general, I'm going to limit just a couple more questions. So that kind of covers the scope of the questions we had come in right now. Um, before we end things, I'll give it a few more seconds if you have a question that's yet to be answered. Um, and again, SDBK is always here to help you if you have, if you come up with something after this session that you need clarified, um, reach out through a support ticket, reach out to your account manager. Um, you can always reach us at info at SDBK, uh, SDBKtech.com if you, you know, don't know if I'm through one of those avenues. Um, but besides that, I think that's going to conclude our Q&A for the day. And we'd like to thank everyone for taking some time to be with us today. Um, keep an eye out for those additional end of year resources. Um, we'll send this recording to you tomorrow afternoon. And thank you all. Thank you, Esteban. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Have a great one.